Hello right bags, it's Jade with another look at another brand new survival game. This one's in development, it's been shown off a bunch of clips on social media and I've been following for a good few months now looking at the progress they've been making and it seems to be going pretty well. Now at first glances when you look at something like this you may consume it as just another forest ripoff or possibly nowadays Icarus since there's a lot of focus on chopping down trees. But man, this game has got more fresh ideas than I've seen in a whole bunch in the last couple of years. So I'm going to go over it, why I think this game could be potentially good, but it's still got a long way to go. I'm going to be showing you clips new and old from their YouTube channel, although there's a whole ton more. So do go and subscribe to the Derelicts YouTube channel. I'll leave the link to their channel and their Twitter page in the comment section and check it out for yourself. But yeah, I think this game's got potential. I can't imagine it's not going to be out until the end of the year, possibly next year, but I think it's showing a lot of promise. So let's go. So it's going to be a four player co-op game where you obviously crash land on an alien planet and there's actual aliens on this planet. Here's looking at you Icarus. You won't have to spend more money on DLC just to get your face ripped off by some tentacled monster. Sci-fi and survival often have problems, whether or not it's the mix between you're supposed to be this spaceman, then why are you using the most basic weapons? But when you've got a story that actually shows you why, where you crash land on a planet and then it's a fight for survival as you gain resources, I'm guessing hopefully to make your escape. But there is definitely an alien element in the game, so it does look like it is going to be focused on maybe defending your base from aliens or finding mysteries and temples or dungeons filled with ancient artifacts and obviously culture and heritage from some of these alien beings. But aside from that, it's got some great crafting mechanics in it, some real automation and powered options. A lot of focus is on basically being a wood tree lumberyard. I can't understand fully the reasoning behind that. I'm guessing it's still early days. Maybe it's a case of we were always meant to come to this planet and maybe we are just about stripping its resources and we're going to carry on doing its job. Otherwise, maybe it's just a really, really fast way to get the materials needed to build your bases. But some of it does look a bit too futuristic. There's like a, a 3D printer cutter of the wood logs which sounds a bit odd when you compare it to like surviving on a planet you just crash landed on would you use them components just to make a better log cutter maybe you would i don't know but here we see some aliens actually attacking they're pretty freaky they're like humanoids but crawling on all fours like a spider jumping around and obviously fighting them with some primitive weapons but it's not just bows and arrows you'll be using it does look like they're going to have guns and automated stuff in the game as well i've already seen some clips of like an ak-47 or something along them lines and you can see what you're wearing as well well, looks pretty pretty sort of combat ready type of guy so these ain't no just scientists that landed it does seem like they were ready for a fight and possibly ready to take on some alien hordes so let's take a look at another one of the most recent clips and i will show some older ones because the old ones have got some great ideas in them and that's really what i want to focus on lots this will change don't be too harsh if you've seen this and thinking oh it's a bit blurry or some things don't really match up or whatever remember it's very early in development like it's made by a solo developer at the moment as well so be kind people game making is extremely hard so bear that in mind but yeah you can see a bit more of the technological arms here helping out i'm guessing maybe the wood helps feed i don't know it just seems a bit odd to have that i know i keep referencing it but it just seems weird this is one of the better ideas in the game absolutely having a doggo as your companion we all know how much dog meat is loved in the fallout franchise and if you can replicate that have something like a pet instead of maybe taming like ark and stuff i think that would satisfy a hell of a lot of people the building systems look nice and simple the ui doesn't look massively cluttered at the moment it may go through changes again so many games have you sitting through menus where the text boxes are tiny again like Icarus and I really loved the act of this and the way they're doing it they've also got a bit of a inspiration from the forest where you literally dump all your actual crafting tools on a blue mat and you start crafting stuff which we'll see in a second as well but here the walkways getting your log flumes your logs basically to go down the flume to your yamba yard seems pretty important and I've shown this off a bunch of times how easy it is but yeah this is where you know some inspiration for other games and I would say definitely when you look at something like this for the first time you might instantly think ah oh, it's just a forest ripoff I won't bother but there is definitely something special they've got some really other cool ideas so we've already seen the dog meat idea come in and it's about mixing some of these ideas to make it worth gelling like make it worthwhile actually playing so if you've got some of the best crafting systems from other games like the forest like that not convoluted UIs where it's nice and simple what you're doing I'm all down for this 
So bear in mind some of these videos are really old, go and check out the YouTube channel and you can see them all in order etc. But this one I really liked because it showed terraforming, slightly. Maybe it's only a case of being able to do this on sand in this actual environment where you've got the yellow sand on the floor. But the idea that you're actually picking it up and you're getting like big perfect circles of it. And again I'm sure that will adjust and change to look a bit more realistic in the future. But those are pretty cool, I like the idea of that, I like the idea it's got a bit more realism in that respect that you're going to be picking up the sand with your shovel, there's full animations for it and it's actually making a difference in the terrain. Another cool feature is the winch and the grapple hook system that Dev seemingly has put in as well. So the fishing that you saw there as well, there's a whole bunch of other stuff you can do. The eat mechanics look great as well. Setting up another log flume to go down and again you'll be able to use this to travel on by the looks of things as well. I love the idea that maybe you don't fill it with water or you're not using a water mat to go down it but you could potentially make some sort of roller coaster. Again just like you can in the forest, I, I admit that, but this is cool, look at this pulling it with your winch with your your pulley so that you can actually pull the log over and then you grab it on and again remember the animations this is an old old clip i'm sure it'll be improved in the future but that looks pretty cool imagine sending that down to your teammates who's in charge of actually getting this all chopped up and put into proper planks and stuff for the base also get an early look at some of the fire mechanics they're showing off as well and it looks okay it looks you know pretty standard at the moment i like the idea that the fire persists though and maybe yes if it does borrow something along the lines from like icarus where fire really could be a problem if there's storms and stuff that will basically set a light to parts of the forest that could be another danger to contend with i'm going to show you something really exciting in a minute as well but look at this this is an actual seasonal change this isn't just another biome that you've wandered into. And so many kind of survival games promise this, that seasons will happen, but they don't really ever happen that greatly. So if a game can offer this, where the frozen river will actually thaw out in summer, I, that, that is exciting to me. That is really cool if they've actually got proper seasons in the game. I know you can just have biomes with the snow in it and stuff, but I like the idea of having to really prepare and get yourself ready for the next season because it's going to be a bit harsher to survive or more bountiful if you're farming. But here's the exciting bit. Again, I've referenced Icarus a lot because that's the newest flavor. A lot of people were enjoying it. I had big issues with Icarus. I didn't like it particularly much in certain respects, hence why I've not really played it or bothered covering it, even though I was pretty hyped before its release because I just felt like not having a persistent world to base build and some of the systems in it, I just felt like were a bit antiquated. Whereas this game's got some of the good mechanics from other survival games for sure, but it's also got its own ideas and I'll keep referencing that. Look at this storm that's approaching. Yes, we've seen storms in other games. Our Survival Evolved actually did it pretty much before anyone else with their Scorched Earth DLC and having sandstorms that would disrupt your electrical goods and make you not be able to see and sometimes reduce your stamina so you'd have to land with your dinosaurs and stuff. But this is a full-blown hurricane or tornado about to come and tear your base to shit. I'm not talking about making some pieces go red like Icarus or other games where you're gonna have to simply go and smash it with a hammer and repair it. I'm talking about full blown destruction. I don't know how you prepare for this. Maybe it is a case of eventually upgrading to stone or maybe it's about having weather warnings and then you can activate your shield to stop you getting destroyed by a tornado. Or maybe you just simply have to live with the fact that very occasionally your world may be turned upside down by a massive tornado and you get to see a bit of the winch action which i'm going to show a bit more detail in a second as well but look at this he's just having his cup of coffee like yeah i i you know everything's fine this is fine uh it's coming towards me i'm just going to chill out here while i see my hard work that i've been building just torn asunder look at it it's gone like it's just gone it's been smashed to bits yeah big trouble ahead and i love that i love that that's a fresh idea to actually have it properly destroy your base and just to show you a little bit you can see it's snowing here we get to look at the water wheel so having power and generating the power or the water at least to go down and of course it is a full blown survival game you saw little clips there of the interface where you see your food your water your temperature and again i like the fact it's not always just on screen it's like pretty minimal at the moment I could take that. It's got it from the digital watch, the Casio 200, exactly. But yeah, I like that. I like the fact that it's been a bit more minimal and you've got to check some of this stuff maybe. I'm sure this will all change though. Do it again, bear this in mind. It's a work in progress. But yeah, it just seems nice and simple. But see what the snow's actually doing. It's resting on the ground. As I told you before, proper seasons, proper changes of weather that'll affect 
how you're playing the game. It's building up and it's literally going to freeze the actual river. So you get to see the 3D sort of cutter here as well. I'm hoping we can use that for more. I like the arms and ideas and stuff. I'm guessing we'll be going around exploring crash sites from maybe some of the wreckage from our ship or maybe other wreckages from other ships as well. Um, and that would be pretty cool to go and get better upgrades and stuff like that as well. But you see, sorting out the power system for it as well the water turning is basically generating the power for that again all very simplistic and rudimentary at the moment i don't need it to be daisy at all times where it's got to be ultra realistic just give me something that is fun easy to use and it's got fresh ideas and look the river is literally frozen up so in a minute that water wheel is not going to turn we also get a look at armor and weapons here as well which again looks pretty decent a more basic primitive way in case you're not a big fan of shooting stuff you've got your hammer and your shield or your axe and your shield and then of course having another brew just to uh fall off the cold a little bit from your hot coffee so again another fresh idea actually changing the landscape as you survive and making it harder or more difficult it's got loads of tree cutting mechanics and again this is all stuff we've seen in other games that do it really well like Valheim the forest of course as well is probably the one that really started off my love of uh, chopping trees down nicely and of course Icarus has got some cool mechanics animations I would say with chopping stuff down but the actual detail that you could cut chunks of a log to actually put on your fire that is definitely more realistic than other stuff I've seen in the way that you have to survive. So yeah, there's a mix here. There's some stuff that's really like, oh my God, this is proper simulation. Then the stuff that's like, wow, this is just nice and fun. It looks easy and simple to use. That's what I really hate about a lot of survival games. They make the menus and stuff so convoluted and I just don't understand why. It doesn't have to be a super hard survival game where you've got to literally put one item in each hand and make sure nothing's empty in the other hand before you can go ahead and wrap a, a bandage. All that stuff just ruins games for me. I don't want to feel like I'm playing Armour 4. I want to play an actual survival game that's difficult, that's challenging, that's got fresh stuff, that hasn't got frustrating menus. Anyway, I bitched about that a bit too long. Uh, showing some more older clips, and again, some of these are pretty old. But again, just showing you the progress the developer has made. This is like over a year old, I think, now. And just, yeah, it's pretty cool just seeing it. I love this stuff. I love following developers, their journeys, their stories, how they get making their games, especially small ones as well. So I hope it really does well. I'm going to be keeping out an eye on this one for sure. And of course, any chance I get to actually try it out when it's ready. Like I said, I really can't see this being ready for a good long while yet. And then lastly, just showing off some, again, the older progress they made, looks like changes are. But I like this fact that you come along and it might be like a minecart system broken down. Points of interest where you can hopefully get some more resources and stuff like that really add to the landscape. This is a familiar looking world, but it definitely has got that alien feel with the creatures and certain aspects of it. And that's what Icarus just didn't do for me enough. But yeah, this is old. I don't think you crash land on that ship anymore. It's more of a jet that you come in landing on, etc. And then caves, we've got more look at some of the aliens in this one as well as we go down. There's loads more clips. I could have maybe recorded about half an hour full of the clips of the gameplay, but I want you guys to go and check out the channel for yourself go and subscribe go and give a like and check out some of the other smaller clips to show some interest and tell them that jpg sent you and just finishing off with another new idea i guess like ark has had grappling hooks in it a while but i just like the ease and convenience of this one it just looks really interesting it looks like it's actually made for it and yeah i just i'm really down for this having pet doggos having actual weather systems and change seasons, actual storms that do proper damage to your bases, having a system like this where you can traverse, menus that are simple to use, automation, power options that look realistic but also look a bit interesting too. This could be potentially a great little game that comes out. And there have been some great little smaller games made, things like The Mist, as well as The Night of the Dead and other games like that lately. Small studios making some of these games that are in early access a while, but they are making progress. They're making lots of updates and stuff, or the updates that do come out are really hitting the mark. So hopefully Derelicts can get to that point where it's going to go into early access. And yeah, I'll hopefully try and support them as much as I can. Enjoy the rest of the content when you go and sub on their channel and I'll see you at bags for more survival previews, news, guides and opinion soon. Laters.